Thank you very much. <coughs> so we're already, I already thank you, but that's not, we first have to go through something, I think, before we that far, okay. So yeah, I'll speak today about the uh, connection, Chris repositories, possibilities and values, that's the title. And uh, it's more or less about the interoperability between Chris systems and repository systems. My name is Ed Simmons. I'm, uh, I work at the Radboud University in Nijmegen, where the last 10, 15 years I mainly do international projects, IT projects for several university networks, but also for uh, some developing countries. Um, one important thing I think related to this uh, meeting and to my uh, being here, apart from uh, being from Eurochris, is that uh, I was the initiator and the project leader of one of the first Chris systems in Europe that was, that's called METIS, it's the Dutch Current Research Information System and it's currently used by all universities in the Netherlands and the Royal Academy of Sciences. So um, being one of the first systems, it's, it already came about around 1992 when we started. So since January 2013, I'm president of Eurochris. And uh, this, of course, also is the main reason why I will speak to you today about the uh, interoperability between Chris systems because we at Eurochris are dealing very much with Chris systems. Um, so the structure of the presentation, um, I will give you a short introduction to the Eurochris organization. Then I will say something about research metadata and the CERIP data model. Then I will go a bit into the position of a Chris in uh, the research information network as I call it. Then I will focus more specifically on the topic of the interoperability, and I will end with some conclusions. Now, the Eurochris organization, we are a foundation legally registered in the Netherlands, and we are an international network for information, research information expert, uh, more specifically developers, managers, and users of uh, Chris systems. I will tell you more about that later. We have 177 members today, um, being 117 institutions and 16, 60 personal members. They come from 43 countries, 32 European and 11 non-European. We have, for instance, members from Canada, the US and uh, South Korea, Mexico. Um, our structure is we have a board that takes care of the strategy, the policy and the management of the organization and <coughs> excuse me, actual work is done by the task groups. So we have a task groups on architecture and development, what we call best practice and directory of research information systems, Serif, Chris IR, so the, the link between Chris's and uh, repositories, linked open data projects and indicators, executive members for conferences, strategy and communications. <coughs> Our main activities are developing and maintaining the CERIP data model. Probably you heard about uh, that model already. And uh, providing a platform and a meeting place is also very important for people interested or working in the domain of research information systems. Uh, we have biannual conferences. The next one will be in Rome in 2014. And the theme for that conference will be data intensive science. We have uh, two members meetings a year. The next one will be in Bonn in May. And uh, in November, we will be very close to you uh, in Porto. And I'm very glad that uh, Lisa Ribera, Professor Lisa Ribera from uh, the University of Porto is here. She will organize the meeting. And we have a yearly seminar in Brussels where we uh, exchange ideas, visions with our strategic partners. 
Uh, one thing we decided uh, recently in the board that we also should start to develop services for the community. And uh, one of the first things we will do is to develop what we call a compliance test or a compliance application for CRIS systems so that developers or vendors who develop CRIS systems can then test uh, against our application and then they will get a kind of uh, Serif compliance certificate. Another thing is that uh, we are planning to organize some trainings. For instance, we submitted uh, a proposal uh, within the framework of the EU program for the training of uh, research managers. So here are our strategic partners. At the moment, I think most of you, you know, ARMA is the European Association of Research Managers. Um, CASRA is a Canadian organization who is uh, doing a lot of work in the standardization of uh, vocabularies and, uh, and semantics concerning the terminology around uh, research information. I think that's very important too. So I think I have to speed up a bit. Um, projects we are engaged in <coughs> is uh, EU funded progr uh, programs like uh, Projects e Engage. Nikos will tell you later about that uh, in the next presentation. Um, Eurorisnet and Open Air Plus and the involvement of Eurocris in all of these projects is directed towards, um, let's say, the introduction or the, the implementation of mostly parts of the Serif data model. Outside of Europe, we have co cooperation with CASRAI. One of uh, the executive director of CASRAI is also board member of Eurocris concerning standardization of uh, vocabularies, and we have contacts with Vivo to see whether we could define a joint project in the near future. And Eurocris board members, of course, are involved in various projects in their countries. And as you may know, the UK has been very active uh, last years when it comes to research information because they are changing to a new uh, audit system or a new assessment system. REF, and uh, in this respect, they are thinking about how do you measure, for instance, impact, and uh, impact in the sense of impact on society. So not uh, counting uh, numbers of publications or citations, but how can you measure, for instance, impact on a certain policy. Um, Snowball Metrics is another uh, project in the UK where Eurocris was uh, involved and uh, uh, together with Elsevier, and uh, there, out of that project, came a set of benchmarking metrics so that institutions could benchmark their performance against each other. Among the members were also Oxford and Cambridge, so I think um, this is an important uh, result. Um, this is our website. I will not go into that. Well, now, I talked about the structure, the organization of Eurocris now. What do we do? What's our main goal? Well, I, I phrased it like this, and this is a personal, um, a personal uh, like, like uh, formulation. Um, well, the core of our work is to develop, find, or promote solutions for optimal registration, discovery, access, and presentation of research information in all its aspects and for all possible stakeholders. So this is, in a nutshell, uh, what Eurocris is uh, aiming for. Uh, so we are not only um, dealing with publications, but with a whole range of, of aspects of, of uh, and I will, I will in the f next few slides come back to that. And Eurocris, and this is important, is of the opinion that the relational database technology is uh, a very good instrument to make this happen. Now when you talk about stakeholders, who can that be? Well, there are a lot of them. You see them here in the slide. We have researchers, of course. We have decision makers like polit the politicians, uh, but also on the local level, university managers, etc. Project managers, publishers, people from education, general public, media, small and middle-sized enterprises, uh, information <coughs> brokers, research organizations, and funding organizations. All these people need research information, want research information, and they want it in a certain way, okay? So you cannot make one package that fits all. 
Now, a lot of text on these slides because there are also a lot of aspects involved in research information. It's not about only about uh, publications, it's about the activities, the projects, it's about the, the institutions involved, the people involved, the researchers, the managers, the funders, the data sets the, the research is based on or what the research has produced, the output, the equipment that is used, the rights of authorization, the distribution rights, intellectual property rights, the semantics, very important. How do you classify your research when it comes to subject areas or thematic fields? The impact, I already mentioned that, and of course the metrics. We all like to play around these days with numbers and show beautiful graphs and how high our, our graphs have reached compared to the other ones and that we have gone up in the ranking of the Shanghai, etc. So this always varies. Now a real world situation, I would go very quickly through that one, but what, what are we dealing with in Eurocris? We are dealing with complex use cases. For instance, this one here, a researcher could be working for various, and this is real life, and this is uh, a researcher from our university. So working for various organizations, various departments, various institutes at the same time, uh, from, from these affiliations, he or she can be working for various projects with various t uh, subjects, etc. The projects can have a different time frame. Some starts in July, another in January, some has ended already, etc. And they have different roles. They can, in one project, they can be a manager, in the other, they're a senior researcher, etc., etc. Projects could have different funding sources from the government, from funding organizations, from the institution itself. They can publish in different languages, and when you, especially when you're dealing with women, no offense, but uh, a researcher can have different names. For instance, uh, as you all know, uh, researchers do not publish always under the same name. Sometimes they use like A. Jones, Jones A, ABC Jones, etc. When women got married, sometimes they change their name entirely, uh, or they add the name of their husband. Now, how do you deal with that when you say, I want publications from that person uh, for that project, etc., etc.? It's not, it's a complex thing. It's not that easy. So what kind of questions do these various stakeholders, what could they ask? They could ask for a list of publications, but not just a list of publications, not on the screen. Mr. Jones has published this. No, that's, that's not really, it, it should be specified. And this is where uh, this metadata that uh, Eurocris is dealing with come in. You see here a few examples of that. All the publications in a certain period from a certain project. Also the colleagues, I mean, if you enter the research information domain with a search query, you, you, throw, you uh, get out the list of publications of a certain researcher. It would be very nice if you could have immediately to the surrounding publications of his colleagues or of the most cited publications, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. <laughs> so all very, it it's comes down to specification. It's not about give me the publications of this or that, because then we end up in another Google situation. No, we have to specify, into, make this intelligence. For that, you need metadata, contextual metadata, as we call it within Eurocris. So now uh, we say, okay, relational database technology is a good uh, instrument for that. And as a starting point, you should have a model. And that's what uh, Eurocris has focused upon uh, a lot in the, in the last few years to define a sound relational database model that we call CERIF, the Common European Research Information Format. And it's an EU recommendation to member states. It has grown in the years, now we are in the uh, version 1.5. We think that Serif is a strong model, okay? Why is that so? First of all, because it's complete. All the things I showed you, all these aspects are covered in Serif. We have worked a lot for proper normalization to make it fine granular and to use the possibilities of the, of the relational database based technology to its full. This means that for instance, as an example, all uh, repeating attributes are not, are, are all attributes that can repeat are not in the table, for instance, where the person is, but are separated, okay? For instance, an author, we don't say 
this is Mr. Jones and then he is an author? No. The author is something that we uh, define separately, we, what we call in linking entities. We say, okay, um, it's, uh, it, the author has his own person table and is linked to publication by means of the publication person link table. This is very important. Then we, we separated the semantics. All, all things that have to do with meaning, we separated them in a separate layer. We, for everything, we have uh, timestamps, okay? So when a person, you say a person, from that day to that day, he was in function for that project as in, in that role. But this role changed at that day. So you can always specify your query saying, I want only these publications from that person in that period when he was working on <coughs> the project that in the end got him the Nobel Prize, for instance. And we have multilinguality on all uh, relevant fields. So this is the model 1.4 uh, sch schematic uh, representation. The basic uh, entities are in the middle and you see all these things around corresponding to things we previously. So now these are these linking tables. So for instance, between a person and a result, and between a person and a project, etc. So you see a person can at the same time be an author or a reviewer or whatever, and he can be at the same time a coordinator or a manager, okay? This is endless. I mean, he can have 10 or 100 different roles. This is the, the nice thing about the model. So, okay, this is a table view of it, uh, where you see the, the an illustration of the semantic layer, where you have all this, but I will not go into that. Very important when it comes to interoperability is that we have um, produced a serif version of the uh, serif uh, relational database model, and I think this would be a good candidate for the interoperability between, uh, for instance, open air, uh, applications and, uh, and crisis, uh, and I'm glad that yesterday Michael already mentioned this as uh, a priority. Okay, so CRIS systems, of course, Serif is meant to be um, the base for a CRIS system. Currently, we have uh, more than 200 CRISs in Europe, and these are the, be the major vendors, Converis, Pure, Symplectic, and Metis. Um, okay, now I will go a bit uh, further into the interoperability. And I think given these two aspects, that uh, Chris is dealing with all these, the, the full specter of the, uh, of the research metadata on the one hand, and on the other hand, that it has this fine detailed structure, this fine, highly normalized, fine-grained structure, we think makes it uh, uh, like a spider in the web uh, for the research information domain. Why is that? Because uh, CRIS, covering all aspects, need a lot of data that are already uh, registered elsewhere. Why should you register them again in CRIS? I mean, why should a researcher again uh, put in these data in another system while it's in PubMed or in EndNote or in Reference Manager or in Scopus or in uh, uh, Web of Science? No, that's not the way to do You should. Uh, get it out of the system, automatically put it into your CRIS system, and the researcher should just have nothing to do with that, it should be. So here you see uh, on, the, on the left side, you see the, uh, the input side. As I say, this, for this example, I am concentrating on our Metis system now. So we have the Metis CRIS server in the middle, and this one concerns the output of the CRIS system. So as I said, what we do is we got automatically by means of web services, etc. We go, get things out of PubMed uh, and all these uh, external things, Scopus, uh, Web of Science. Uh, researchers also, they have a personal uh, dashboard f to enter data because it's possible for a research to now and then enter a publication. Um, from Scopus also, we got the citation information, okay? On the output side, we provide the, the metadata for the uh, university repository. Of course, we provide a lot of uh, presentations in all kinds of formats. I will show you some of them later. And we provide, of course, also the uh, other formats like linked open data and, uh, and uh, the OAI PMH. 
Now, what can you do with it? Like this, this is not only maintenance, but this is common use for crisis, for modern crisis nowadays. If you want a CV of a researcher with all these things, one push on the button and you get things like this. This is done in our institutions daily, okay? This is, this is no rocket science. I mean, this is just what a Chris can do. Um, yeah, another one? No, I am wondering a bit. Oh, yeah, I will switch a bit and show you. Um, yeah, but it's, it's very... Maybe we started later. Because actually the most interesting thing. <laughs> yeah, here you see, for instance, our researcher puts uh, input into the repository. So the researcher got uh, his publications as they are in Matis, the list, and then he, he pushed the button and he is, uh, what is it? Okay. And he is uh, directed to an upload screen where he can upload the full text of the publication. The Metis ID is, is uh, it goes together with that uh, publication, or yeah, with the full text. And in the night there is a web service. Now I don't know what happened because so I. So we have to do it again. So, okay, this is the, uh, the, the schema of the interoperability in the major situation. Um, you see there are three entry of data, metadata. All the metadata goes into the CRIS system, okay? Whether it comes automatically through harvesting from uh, things like Scopus or, or PubMed or whatever. The secretariat in the middle there, they can uh, put information in, or the individual researcher. All the metadata goes into the CRIS system. When they push the metadata there, the full text, they can upload the full text. Then in the next stage, uh, during the night, every night, the web service gets the metadata of the newly put uh, publications in the CRIS system automatically into the uh, repository and outputs this uh, full text URL to the uh, Metis system. Metis itself can also expose directly OAI PMH. So what the University of Amsterdam, for instance, is doing, they don't, uh, they want to uh, throw out, so to speak, their D space because they say we don't need it. We will, we will just use the CRIS. I mean, we'll directly harvest on the CRIS. It's perfectly possible. Why should you make this detour here? Okay, so, but still, in a lot of situations, the, the metadata goes from the CRIS in the repository, and then the repository exposes it as DC and uh, uh, little mods like we do for Narciss, uh, etc. Okay, so yes, yeah, since it's time, I think I have to uh, close my presentation. We've seen this already. Okay, one thing I wanted to say still is that um, this is interoperability on, let's say, the input side, where you put metadata into your system uh, and, and you, you, you throw it into the repository or it's even not necessary, etc. But I think um, we should also take a look at uh, other forms of, of interoperability. For instance, internationally, I think the Serif XML would be a good standard for, uh, to, to uh, communicate with CRIS systems. And there is also other types of uh, interoperability, non-technical things like interoperability uh, concerning the development of services. Yesterday, Natalia talked about services within the uh, uh, open air, but I think we should work together to see. We have, a, I think, crisis and the metadata in crisis and our experience. I mean, you've seen these, these things you can do with the CRIS. Our experience uh, can, can be an added value to, to your community, I'm sure about that. And also on an organizational level, what, what we see is that in a lot of cases within institutions, the CRIS and the repository world, there are different cultures. The one is in the library, and the other one is somewhere in the research administration, uh, in the central administration. Uh, they work alongside each other in a lot of cases. Uh, we have a few very good, best, uh, good practices in the Netherlands of how you can optimally integrate them uh, to the benefit of both. And now I will 
stop, I think, because it's time. No? So here are my conclusions. You can read them. And uh, now I would briefly present uh, Danica. I don't know. No, there she is. Yeah, Danica, she is uh, the task group leader of um, uh, a task group we have in Eurochris that's called uh, Chris IR. And Chris IR is especially dedicated to uh, study and to, to uh, deal with uh, I, uh, problems or, or possibilities uh, related to uh, the working together of Chris's and by the way, Danica, please, could you say a few words? So this is also important, the last slide here, that, that I think we should also see broader uh, to other organizations than, than only ourselves. Well, thank you very much. I think one of today's uh, breakout groups would be about serif uh, model, so we'll have a chance to talk uh, more about it, uh, and maybe mm -hmm. then we can show the videos uh, we have. And Nikos uh, wrote uh, an article in uh, Open Air Plus newsletter about uh, serif model and interoperability between Open Air and Serif. Uh, so you can also check it out. Then it's please. So let's introduce myself. My name is Danica Zendulkova. I work in Slovak Center of Scientific and Technical Information in Bratislava, Slovak Republic. I am responsible for Slovak uh, current research information system, and uh, this system uh, now starts and it is uh, made uh, based on CERIF. Uh, I am a, a Eurocris member since 2007 and board member since 2011. Uh, our institute is um, so it's an institution that is library, scientific library and uh, scientific institute involved in several projects. Uh, also, since uh, this year, it's uh, involved to Open Air Plus Institute. We provide not only information system, CRIS, but uh, also some bibliographic database uh, and uh, several application. We have no time for it, but uh, I think it's uh, very interesting also uh, to tell you about uh, my employer. But uh, I would like to te tell about a uh, short word about Chris IR. Task group web page is on uh, Eurochris pages. And uh, so uh, I would like to say that uh, if you have some CRIS application and uh, in the same time you provide a repository, this application is connected in several manner. You should uh, insert uh, your data to the directory of uh, research information system on web page CRIS IR. So if it will okay. Yeah, I don't think we have a chance. We have time. Maybe no. Maybe some problem. Yeah, make, make, make. So I would like uh, to invite you to task group Chris IR meeting. It's not only task group IR meeting, but it is part of a spring membership meeting, uh, 13 and 14 May. 2013, so this year, in Bonn, in Germany. And the uh, topic of uh, our uh, Chris IR meeting will be introduction to the Chris IR interconnection. So we need, uh, to, we need to find some uh, nice application based of uh, uh, Chris system and the repository and uh, find some interesting software and uh, technical solution for uh, best practice for uh, another Chris and repository users for help, for help them to join this application. So it's all for me. Thank you very much. Thank you. And, uh,
might be web page. No, no, it's no? okay. It's okay. That's Thank okay. So if people will find it, no problem. Thank you. Thank Ed, you very uh, much. And Danica. If you have a burning question, I think we can take one question now. Is there, is there any questions? Please make up. Uh, thanks. Uh, okay. One question to Ed Simmons about uh, you know Chris Systems uh, taking the role as a as a repository as well. So uh, this is a very known situation also in Denmark. But I'm one thing that concerns me is that the Chris System is not so concerned about the whole open access area. So and and sort of the interoperability with uh, initiatives there are in the open access movement about sharing uh, statistical information on usage and and you know making sure that <coughs> there is. Um, well, some of the initiatives there is in open access. What's your, your opinion on that? Yeah, this depends. Uh, well, uh, my answer to that is that it depends on the local situation and the local management. Because, um, first of all, with a Chris system, uh, you can connect them. And I mean, it would be possible to, 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 to deliver some information, what apparently you are missing now. That, uh, But uh, this depends on... on uh, on the, the the practice and the the policy of the local management, it's not it's not a technolo technological yeah, problem. Yeah, I'm I'm completely uh, agreeing on that. It's more like sort of a an, a discourse that you have with the system. And what what you talk about when you have a Chris system is you, you usually talk about you know research assessment and getting the whole picture of what is the output of the university, what yeah. are the activities of the university, yeah. Yeah. And, and 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 sometimes the whole open access part of it just you know yeah it's not there. Yeah, <coughs> that's true, but um, you know, the Chris systems evolved as, as systems for evaluation and for assessment. But I think in, in the course of time, they they have broadened their scope uh, significantly. And uh, for instance, I can speak from uh, my my Metis case. Is um, but again, um, this is this this depends heavily. Uh, again, on the policy of the local management in the university, what you do with the Chris. If you do it, let's say, uh, if you have do it from uh, starting from a vision that you want to use the full possibilities of a Chris, then you can do a lot with it. I mean, if, if I look at the universe, Technical University in Eindhoven, they are doing wonderful <coughs> things uh, when it comes to interoperability between Chris's and, and uh, semantic web applications, linked open data, I mean, they have the screens where the data come from uh, the Chris system, they expose them as LOD, and they do all kind of wonderful mashups uh, with these things. Others, like uh, the Erasmus Institute of Management, uh, that's why I'm saying it depends a lot on the, <laughs> on the environment. Um, yeah, when it comes to, to, to uh, presentation of research groups, for instance, and also uh, alerting people to, to open access publications, uh, they do it, and they do it from within the CRIS. They, for instance, one wonderful thing they do is they create, they, they not create, they generate, that's the, the proper word, they generate uh, websites, web environments for researchers who are virtually what they call virtual networks, who are not working together in a formal structure, but who are working together a lot in an informal structure. These uh, researchers appreciate this very much because they say, now we have a window to show ourselves also as a group, to broadcast ourselves as a group to the world. And uh, it, it, it attracts, for instance, in, in this special case, um, they have attracted uh, very talented young uh, scientists they, they even didn't know that were working uh, in their field and uh, of course to me if, if uh, with my experience within within a Chris uh, within the Chris world I mean it, it's no problem to to make the link with the open access and to provide the information that the open access in, uh, community need and to provide the statistics certainly that is, is, is not a problem I think so I think we'll have more time to talk about